And this is our cast of characters today. We have Melipona mandesaya, which is found in arid desert-like regions in the Caatinga part of Brazil. You can notice the br bright yellow stripes along the abdomen. This is Melipona bicolor. This is found in the Atlantic rainforest in southeast Brazil. And this is Melipona panamica, which is found in Panama. The general hypothesis is bees can communicate location. How do we go about testing this? We use paired feeders to test each dimension separately. So first question we asked, can they communicate distance? And this is the basic setup. So here you have distance. The white dot um, indicates the location of the nest. And this white triangle indicates the location of the control feeder. The control feeder is identical to the training feeder, except that no bees are allowed to forage at it. Any bee that lands at the control feeder is immediately captured. And this prevents bees from communicating the location of the control feeder. The red half circle, which is now 100 meters away in the same direction, indicates the training feeder. This is the feeder that we've been carrying along and training the bees to. We only allow 20 individually marked foragers to feed. We count the number of bees that are visiting each 15 minutes to make sure that there is only 20. And then we collect unmarked bees, that is newcomers. Later on, we do mark them and release them and check to make sure that they are from the same colony back inside the nest. So what would we expect in this case? Well, if they could communicate the uh, distance, we would expect that significantly more newcomers would show up at the training feeder. And for these first two trials, that is correct. All of them show up at the training feeder. But what if they couldn't communicate distance? You probably would expect that they'd show up at the nearest feeder, which is the control feeder. This feeder is only 10 meters away from the nest. This feeder is 100 meters away. If you're going to fly out randomly without knowing the direction, um, you would certainly expect that most of the bees, or at least half of them, would arrive at the control feeder. But that's not the case. So um, these are pooled data to avoid um, confusion and data overload. But you can see that in all four of these trials, regardless of the location of the training feeder, whether west or east, all of the newcomers show up at the training feeder. None of them come to the control feeder. Here with Melipona bicolor, we have used a control feeder at 50 meters. And you can see again that in this case, in all three trials, all of the newcomers show up at the training feeder, none at the control feeder. And here we have a few showing up at the control feeder, but still an overwhelming and significant majority show up at the training feeder. So these bees, Mendesai and Bicolor, can communicate distance. Well, how about direction? We can test direction in the same way. So now what we do is we have a control feeder 100 meters east and a training feeder 100 meters west. If they don't know how to communicate uh, direction and they're just flying randomly around, you would expect that equal numbers of newcomers would arrive here and here. But in fact, all of them arrive at the location of the training feeder. So they must know direction for Melipona mandesaya. For Melipona bicolor, it's the same story. These bees can also communicate direction. Well, what about height? And uh, this is the interesting part of the talk. I mentioned that honeybees cannot communicate height. And I used a very similar experiment to the one that Lindauer did. He also used a water tower. He also trained the bees up to the top of the water tower. And he provided a control feeder at the base. He found that all of the bees came to this feeder, and none of them came to the top feeder. Furthermore, even if you remove this feeder so they have no opportunity to feed here at all, all of the um, honeybee recruits just sort of mill around here. None of them ever reach the top. And here is um, Santiago at the top of the water tower. Well, what are the results? So this is, again, pooled data. And the summary shows that in these six trials, roughly equal numbers of newcomers show up both at the control location and at the training location, regardless of whether the training feeder is at the base of the tower or at the top. Now, why are we doing all these switches? Well, one possibility is to avoid site bias. Maybe bees prefer to fly west or prefer to fly east. That's why we're always switching the directions. In this case, maybe bees prefer to fly 12 meters above the ground, and so this is the first feeder that they would encounter. Um, but apparently, the newcomers do not have a preference. For Melipona bicolor, 
it's um, interesting. If you place the, the training feeder at the base of the canopy tower on the ground, you see that roughly equal numbers of newcomers come to both the control and the training feeder. When the feeder is on the ground, they don't seem to be able to communicate height. But in these three trials, when you have the feeder on top of the canopy tower, all of the newcomers come to this feeder at the top, and none come to the bottom. Now, this may have something to do with the way in which they're communicating this height, and I'll be talking about that later. So in summary, the melopona bickler newcomers can only find the feeder at the correct height when it is high above the ground. Well, how about Melopona panamica? We're very fortunate in that there's a 40 meter high canopy tower on the island. And here you can see um, ships transiting the Panama Canal. And here we are on the top of the canopy tower. I won't go through all the experiments um, in detail, but in summary, these three species, Mendesia, Bicolor, and Panamica, can all communicate distance, they can all communicate direction, but they have different abilities to communicate height. Mendesia cannot communicate height at all. Melopona bicolor has a weak ability to communicate height. It only seems to communicate the height of the food source when it's high above the ground. Finally, Panamica has an excellent ability to communicate height. It can differentiate between height differences of down to 10 meters. <laughs>